Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing K-Bob in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Looks like we're going to have a Queen's Gambit, and it'll be a Slav. Okay, I'll play Knight F3. I guess I'll play this Queen C2 line. I played this in my most recent tournament in London, the London Chess Classic FIDE Open. And I used it to score a win in round three against a FIDE Master. I also had it played against me in round two, so I've seen much of this move lately. I like it because it's simple to play, and uh, it skirts a lot of the theory that black is often going for. So e6 is possible. It does lock in the light square bishop. I like bishop g5 here. And now by transposition, we're in a QGD-like position. Okay, bishop e7. I'm just going to play e3. And assuming black castles, I could stick the knight on c3 or d2. Probably c3 is the way to go. Yeah, there's not too much of a reason to go knight bd2 anymore. Sometimes you do deploy the knight to d2 in this line, but given that black is just looking for a QGD setup, I think this is all right. Now I'm going to go rook d1. I'm going to hold off on playing my bishop out to d3 for the moment, because I'm going to see if black will voluntarily play d takes c4. And putting the rook on d1 is useful. I saw this in a Kramnik game. I believe the game Kramnik versus Yusupov from sometime in the 90s, where Kramnik won. Wait, no. Was it Yusupov? It might have been Nikolic or someone like that. I'll see if I can find the game and post it in the comments. But basically what Kramnik did is after rook d1, an eventual trade on c4 resulted in Kramnik taking with the bishop and then playing a3, bishop a2, and bishop b1, which I thought was a neat maneuver. So I may try to do something similar. So black plays b6. So do I go bishop d3 now? Or something else. Taking on d5 doesn't lead to too much. Yeah, let's just play bishop d3. If they take, we do kind of lose a tempo, given that we've played two bishop moves. Bishop d3, bishop takes c4. But on the whole, it should be fine. Black could also play bishop b7, and then after castles, say rook c8, and look to gradually play c5 and try to equalize. Here, I'm tempted to play c takes d5. Maybe I can wait a move to do that, but I'm sorely tempted to do it right now. Because after c takes d5, they would have to take with a c pawn. You know, you know what? I'm going to wait a move to do it, if I'm going to play it at all. I think they're going to play rook c8 and line up their rook with my queen. So maybe I benefit from holding off for a move. So now I could play something like c takes d5, c takes d5, queen e2, looking to play bishop a6. Although knight e4 might be an effective response to that. Maybe queen e2 directly, but still c5 is going to happen. I could also go for pawn e4 if I want, but does that work tactically? Oh, maybe, actually e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4. Huh. Knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, bishop takes e4. And then I'm attacking h7. You could play f5. f5, bishop d3, and then c5, though. Then I can play d5. That gets very sharp. Okay, so this is definitely decision time, because I have a, a few different candidate moves I'm looking at. C takes d5, e4, queen e2, queen a4 crossed my mind, but I think he can take on c4 if I do that. Queen e2 just seems lame. And c takes d5, c takes d5, I don't think I have much there. Because if queen e2, knight e4 looks like a good reply. So I think I'm going to play for e4. What if e4, knight takes e4? I can just play bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, knight takes e4. Yeah, that's fine. There's another line I'm looking at, which I'll explain after I play this move. So if d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop takes e4, knight f6. 
I'm thinking about playing c5. The idea being to stop black from playing c5. And we'll see if that works out in a second, because I have a feeling he might go for that. If you play c5 here, I can take on f6, and I think black has trouble with the h7 pawn. So I would expect knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop takes e4, and then probably knight f6. I mean, he might play some other move to defend h7, but knight f6 would be most consistent, because that defends h7, attacks my bishop, and also allows the black queen on e7 to coordinate with the bishop. But no, he's going to play h6 instead, okay. Well, bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, c5. That's usually how you want to play these positions, because it's important to keep this bishop at bay. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do this. If he's allowed to play c5, and I don't have some sort of tactical refutation of it, black is usually fine. So I'm going to try to be proactive and play c5 myself to make sure he doesn't achieve that pawn break. And it's quite possible that this bishop will just be bad on b7. This is pretty instructive, I think, if you play these types of positions, because this has happened to me before, like I've been in black shoes. Uh, now, I could also take on f6 first. Knight takes, bishop takes, and then c5. Maybe that's better, because if I play c5 directly, he does get to use the d5 square for his knight, which isn't the end of the world for white, but I think it's better to eliminate that knight first and only then go for c5. Yeah, let's do that. Check. So bishop takes, and then we'll play that pawn to c5 move. Could also stick my bishop on e4, but I think c5 is more direct. Note that here he can't play bishop takes d4 because of knight takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop h7 check with the discovered attack on the black queen, winning it. So now black will have to figure out a way to make this piece relevant. Otherwise, he's looking at a difficult defense. So maybe rook c7, looking to eventually play like bishop c8 and somehow arrange e5. But c6 will also be weak. I might employ the maneuver bishop h7 check, king h8, bishop e4 at some stage here. I wouldn't put that past me because then we could force the king a little bit further to the corner. I think the black's king would be worse off on h8 than it is on g8. You know, in an end game, he's further away from bringing his king to the center. Also, f7 might be weaker. So sometimes you do see someone throwing that in if they have like a queen bishop battery. Like they'll intentionally play a check and only then bring the bishop to a square they want to go to versus playing like bishop e4 right away in this case. I think h6 was a mistake by black. I think they would have been better off omitting that move entirely. Okay, so black does play rook c7. It's probably a good try. Because maybe they're going to put the rook on d7 and try to pressure d4. I don't think this is a cure-all for black's problems, but it's a, it's a try. Alright, so what if I check king h8 and then bishop e4? There's also a knight e5 right away. Just kind of interesting. I somehow like that. Because <laughs> it stops rook d7. Maybe that's the reason why I like it. Knight e5 bishop takes, though. Hmm. I'd like to play bishop e4 and then knight e5. But bishop e4, rook d7, and then what do I do? Or bishop h7, bishop e4, then rook d7. Because if I play c takes b6, a takes b6, he even has queen takes b6. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to play knight e5. Now that I stare at this a little bit more. If knight e5, b takes c5, I can play d takes c5. Is it bishop takes c5, there's bishop h7, and I win as queen. So, yeah, let's go for this. Queen takes d4, still not possible in view of bishop h7.
And if he trades, I'm hoping that I can use the D file faster than he can. What if bishop takes e5, d takes e5, queen e7, attacking c5? Maybe then I would play bishop h7 check, king h8, and rook d6. Getting a rook into d6 would be great if I have pawns on c5, e5. That would be a tremendous outpost square for that rook. In that line, so bishop takes e5, d takes e5, queen e7, bishop h7 check, king h8, rook d6. He could trap my bishop with g6. But then bishop takes g6, f takes g6, queen takes g6. Looks pretty strong. Although, hmm, I don't know, that's not so clear. I get two pawns, and also h6 and e6 are incredibly weak for him, but I don't know about that. Okay, instead he plays b5. I like to see that move too. I think that's going to assist me as white here. So now I'm thinking check and then put the bishop on e4 and try to bring about, bring about pressure on c6. Yeah, let's do that. Check. We can pre-move this move because black doesn't have any choice but to play king h8. I think he's going to be tied down to this pawn. This looks really difficult. Maybe f4 to come, propping up this knight even further. I'm also thinking long term, it might make sense to play queen e2, drop the bishop back, and then get the queen in front. Play the queen to e4 and try to create a battery and attack h7. But I think if he plays like queen e7 right now, I probably would play f4. I really like the look of f4. Yeah, probably f4 and queen e2. And this bishop is not a happy camper on b7. And if ever he takes that knight on e5 and we trade, I'm just sinking that rook into d6, which is great for us. Queen e8, okay. Why queen e8 and not queen e7? I don't understand that. Maybe he wants to play g6 and is worried about sacrifices on g6? Hmm, very tough to say. Maybe queen e2 right away. I could also try to play on the queen side a bit. Like maybe try to get my queen into a5 to hit the rook and also the pawn. But just staring at that king side, I think I'm, I'm going to have good opportunities there. Ah, uh, he must want to play bishop c8. Mm hmm that must be the reason. Because on e7, he would not be defending c6 any further. So I think with queen e8, he's trying to play bishop c8. But even the bishop coming to d7 is no improvement. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go queen e2. I don't need the queen on c2 anymore. There's no point in keeping a battery with the bishop in front. So I think introducing the idea of dropping the bishop back and bringing the queen up will create some threats. I still might go f4. Haven't decided yet. He does play bishop c8. Maybe now f4. I'm not going to take on c6. I don't want to trade two of my minor pieces for a rook plus pawn. That would be a really bad trade. I can play queen f3, but he can always play his bishop to d7 or b7 to defend. So I get the sense that f4 is just all around a more useful move now. Let's do that. Supporting the knight further. This is a fun position to play because I can conceivably play on any area of the board. I have ideas on the king side. I have ideas on the queen side. Maybe playing a4 eventually is a good plan. Trying to weaken him on this wing. 
Sometimes being spoiled for choice like this, though, is uh, a way to make your position even more difficult. <laughs> you, like, you might experience problems because you just have so many good moves. Okay, I think bishop c2 and introduce this queen e4 plan. Maybe I could play queen h5 if I want to rule out g6 as a defense. But if I play queen h5, like, how am I following up? That's the only thing. I think on bishop c2, it's likely he'll play pawn g6. I should keep that in mind. Maybe I can just play queen e4 all the same. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I'm just going to play bishop c2. I'm not going to think too hard about trying to stop g6. I think g6 is going to be a weakness regardless, so let's not worry about trying to prevent it. The bishop on c2 could support a4 as well, if I want to switch back to the queen side at some stage. Which I might if I feel like black is going to be tied down to the king side threats. Yeah, he's got to huddle up now, like g6 and then bishop g7. This knight is a monster on e5 though, he's, he's really going to have a tough time dealing with that. Ooh, maybe there's a tactic. If g6, knight g4, bishop g7, do I have knight takes h6? Because if bishop takes h6, there's queen e5 check, picking up the rook. Issue with that I see is that if g6, knight g4, bishop g7, knight takes h6, he could play f5. And my knight is trapped over here. So he plays bishop d8 instead. Huh. If queen e4, are you really going to play f5? So that looks anti-positional. <laughs> Maybe rook de1 right now is good. I might even go to d3 with the queen. Yeah, let's play rook de1. Just line up that rook with the black queen on e8. And we'll just wait a moment. Is he so passive? Maybe he'll play f5 voluntarily with me, not having to play queen d3 even to tempt him. Because in doing so, he weakens e6. f6 is not going to work because it allows knight g6 check with destruction. Yeah, uh, this position should be lost for black. But with this amount of time, I mean, it's not conceivable that black can confuse the matter. He's going to have to try to pick his moment to do so, because otherwise, I mean, you see how I'm building up, and I already control like two-thirds of the board. Black is just stuck on the back couple ranks. Eventually, white's going to create a decisive blow somewhere. So black has to be ready to shake things up when they get an opportunity. Queen e7, what if just queen e4, though? Then you have to play g6. Knight takes is not working quite yet, though. Knight, queen h5 also looks really good still. Okay, so if queen e4, g6, where is my killer move? <laughs> How do I end his resistance? I don't see it, actually. Maybe I should play queen h5. He can play his bishop to e8. Maybe that's his plan all along. What about queen d3, queen d3, g6? Can I do something forceful like f5? g takes f5. 
Rook takes f5, pawn takes f5, knight g6, check. It's too much material, though. I think I'm going to play queen h5. But I feel like I'm missing something, too. I feel like there's a stronger way to execute him. Queen d3, g6, queen takes g6, doesn't work, because he can take. I take with check, king over, take check. He's going to be up a piece for a couple pawns there. Hmm. Pawn f5, pawn takes. Bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Not quite enough. Okay. Let's go queen h5. I mean, this is still an uncomfortable move for black to face. Maybe I can lift a rook up to the third rank too. Like say he plays king g8, maybe I'll go rook e3. Try to swing it over to g3. Threaten queen takes h6. f5 is a big idea. Now that my queen is not standing on the same file as his queen, f5 and if pawn takes, maybe knight g6 at some stage. Although it still doesn't work because so my queen would be under attack. Hmm. The big thing is just not losing on time. <laughs> Like I thought for over a minute on that last move, I think, and probably that's the wrong thing to do because my position is just so dominating. Like I could play almost any move there and it wouldn't disrupt the status quo. So is it worth spending a fifth of your time when your opponent is tied down whatever you do? Probably not. But I was trying to find that knockout. Okay, so against this, I was thinking lift the rook. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's go rook e3. Try to get in attacking range with rook g3 and threaten queen takes f6. You can play queen h4 and offer a queen trade, but I can always just retreat then. Like queen e2. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to take the queen trade. Just back this baby off. I would only take that queen trade if I clearly won material in doing so. So we just have so much of a free attack against this king. We don't want to spoil that. And I think his queen is going to have to come back to e7 soon anyways. Still f6 is never an option because of knight g6, among other things. Next move, probably rook h3, queen e7. And then maybe queen g4, threatening rook takes h6. I'm still looking at if, if knight takes d7 ever works, because I don't want to forget that I can take this bishop. But that's also a move that I would only play it if it led to material gain. And probably something significant, too, because this is just such a great knight, and that is so clearly a bad bishop. Rook e8. Okay. Maybe f5 is enabled now because he does take the rook off f8, so knight g6 wouldn't be as crushing. I'm thinking if I can play queen d3, or if I just want to start with rook h3. Rook h3, queen e7, queen d3. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just do this straight away. If queen e7, I'll play a queen move. Either queen g4 or queen d3, most likely. Please queen f6, though. All right. Queen e4, though. Queen e4, queen f5. 
but I can always repeat if necessary. Yeah, so let's do that. Because if g6, I have rook takes h6, so he can't play that move. And it's helpful that on queen f5, I know I can always retreat. Queen e2, and he just has to back his own queen off. Could also take, take, take d7, take, take f5, but I lose d4 at the end. So yeah, let's just bring this back. He's got no choice, has to play queen f6. Okay, knight g4, knight g4, queen e7. Knight takes h6. Pawn takes, queen g4, check. King f8. Rook takes h6. Ooh, that looks really bad for him. How is he escaping that? Knight g4. Oh, knight g4, queen takes d4. Be careful, John. <laughs> Don't want to blunder into that. Okay, I'm just going to play king h1. I'm going to get my king out of the way. Two minutes remaining. Let's just stop queen takes d4 with check ever. I might play g4, g5. I'm thinking about that as well. Or g4 and put the queen on e4 or d3 again, because queen f5 is ruled out. Place the rook back to f8, okay. Again, if queen d3 or queen e4, he's going to play queen f5. So let's go for this. We're going to attack with the pawns on the king side. So now the threat is g5, and if take, we have bishop h7 check, forcing his king to h8 right into discoveries. Okay, so let's keep pushing here. Yeah, he can't take it. If he takes it, he's going to lose. I mean, queen h5 even, other than bishop h7 check, is going to be mate. Hey, he just resigned. It's it's too tough. Yeah, I mean, practically speaking, black's only chance right now is to just get white in time pressure and try to confuse the issue, because white just has everything. Okay, yeah, this is a thematic game for this structure and what can happen when... White's able to achieve c5. Black gets incredibly cramped, and it's the story of that bishop on b7. If black could put this bishop like on d5, it would be fine. But the bishop on b7 is buried, and white has a clear advantage. So let's go back and have a look. So this is that queen c2 Slav. A nice line that is pretty theoretically respectable. You see plenty of GMs playing this, and it just avoids a lot of the theory that you see with instead knight c3 on move 4, the main move, or e3, which is also quite popular. So uh, in that game against the FM from London, he played g6. And I also see d takes c4 a fair amount. e6, I think, is a bit inferior to those two moves, because I don't think it's worth locking in the light square bishop. Some people do play this way, and then after bishop g5, usually they take on c4 and then try to play b5. Sort of playing it like a semi-slav where you stick the bishop here and then eventually try to get c5 in. But I think white might keep a small edge in this line. And it's easier to play for white. But he played bishop e7 and kind of had a queen's gambit declined formation. So rook d1. Like I said, I'll try to link to that Kramnik game where I saw this idea. Kramnik won a very nice game. But if he takes right here, then I can say that I've taken on c4 in one go. I haven't had to take a pit stop with my bishop on d3. And in that Kramnik game, he did like a3, bishop a2, and bishop b1, and launched an attack against black's kingside. So b6, I played bishop d3, bishop b7, castles. Okay, so this, this position was important. I spent a little time here. Yeah, two minutes on this move. Because I have options, and if I choose something innocuous, I think black's going to play c5. And their rook being on the same file as my queen is relevant. Like, that will enable black to potentially equalize. 
So let's see what the computer thinks about this. Bishop f4 is its top move. What does it think about e4? Because I think e4 is direct and it's probably the best try visually for an advantage at least. So he took the pawn. The engine doesn't like that. It says just play h6. Or I shouldn't say it doesn't like that. It prefers h6. h6 looks kind of strange, though. I think most people are going to want to uh, relieve the tension and take here. Which should be fine. Take, knight takes. Yeah, and I think this is a mistake. So I was looking at this line. And I was mentioning some lines that I was thinking about. Bishop takes e4, attacking here. And I mentioned knight f6, and also I mentioned f5. If f5, I can drop the bishop back, and this is always strategically risky for black because he does create a backward pawn on e6. Point is, he'd have to follow with c5, but I think, even though he's attacking my knight on f3 and threatening to double isolate my pawns, I think d5 is going to be a good reply. I'm trying to cut out this bishop. And if he takes, I can play bishop takes f5. And I didn't look too much further than this, but I thought the tactics were favoring white. I mean, I've got an attack against h7. The knight on d7 is pinned. Maybe I can take this pawn. It should be good for white. But I think a key line for sure is the following variation. Now, instead of f5, knight f6. And this could be like the game, because I was still thinking about playing c5 here. But with a pair of minor pieces being exchanged compared to the game, maybe black has better chances to get out of this. Because I would still try to play against this bishop, but maybe something like this. Yeah, rook f d8, try to bring the rook up to d5. Black is less cramped here than they were in the game. That's for sure. Yeah, and here it's not even one set of minor pieces. It's two set of minor pieces that have been traded compared to the game. Maybe they could even take on c5. I don't know. This would be interesting, because I think white's going to get some compensation, but maybe it's playable. Yeah, it appears to be. Rook b8. Black death will have to be careful, but they should be all right. Maybe white will have to be careful. I don't know. <laughs> so I think black should do that instead of h6. He pretty quickly played h6. Yeah, spent about... 30 seconds on that move, but I think after these exchanges happen, Check. this is a tough position for black, c5. I've noticed that the computer consistently underestimates these positions. Like, if you just go strictly by the engine eval, it doesn't think that black is in any danger here. But if you look in a lot of, like, old chess textbooks and positional manuals, they show positions like this, and they always say, like, white is better <laughs> with this pawn on c5, blunting the bishop. Because Jonas is on black to get this piece in the game. Yeah, I think if you were to show this position to most strong players, they would definitely prefer white. Queen c7. The computer isn't too impressed, but it just looks easier to play the first player's position. I can always Check. do this sort of thing, and I'll have long-term pressure on c6. So he played rook c7. But knight e5 seems to be a good response. Yeah, so maybe maybe queen c7 is the best move for that reason, and try to quickly get a rook to d8. So I also thought rook c7 was worth thinking about trying to transfer the rook here, but if knight e5 is just strong against that, then black is really struggling. And also note that this tactic is present. If black takes on d4 twice, we have bishop h7 winning the queen. Definitely a tactical pattern to be aware of. So rook c7, and I played knight e5. I was just trying to stop rook d7 with that move. And if take, take, I assume that this was also very good for white. Again, we're threatening rook d7. Or sorry, bishop h7 check. So he might have to cover that with rook d7. Check. Yeah, even this looks good. If he takes, I would assume we can trade on d7 and then take c5. Hitting the rook and also hitting a7. Better pawn structure, better bishop for white, clear advantage. So he played b5. Yeah, I don't know that b5 is correct either, though. 
I think it's in his best interest to maintain a little bit of tension. Because I wouldn't ever really take B6. It would have to be clearly good to take B6. I'm not going to do that just on a whim. So there's not really a, a whole lot of a reason to play B5 and close it up on the queen side. Check. Now I did this maneuver of the bishop to E4. I think the engine is more advocating for a queenside plan. It wants me to play a4 and try to break up his pawns over there. That's certainly possible, but the kingside also looked interesting. It's nice when you kind of have our eureka moment, and I had a mini one of those right here when he played queen e8. Like, for some reason, I couldn't figure out why that move would be played versus queen e7. But then it dawned on me that he, he wants c6 protected. He figures that he needs c6 protected to free up his bishop. So that's why he did that. Okay, so I went for this f4 idea. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, black has repositioned their bishop, but that hasn't really helped them much. In fact, it might hurt them because the rook on c7 does not have as clear access along the 7th rank now. So the only question here was how to cash in on my advantage. Because I think the king side is where it's at now especially since I've made some strides already with f4 and I have this potential battery by dropping the bishop back and bringing the queen up. Queen h5 is the move that the engine likes here. Yeah, I thought about that. I mean, queen h5 is a good way to stop black from playing g6 because we win the pawn. So what would be the follow-up? a5, I'm just looking at the top engine moves. Queen h3, that seems kind of odd. Maybe to sidestep. Hmm, maybe to sidestep f5 or something, but knight g6 could always be the answer. Bishop c8, rook fd1. Again, I'm just playing some of the engine moves right now. Some of these moves look inconsistent to me. Check. Yeah, much just like the buildup white has. And then after getting the rook to g3, I have threats. f5 is the best move, really. What if black just waits? Bishop e7. a3, switch back to the queen side. Hmm. I'm not completely convinced by that line that the engine gives. I do agree with the engine that queen h5 is desirable, because it does prevent that pawn to g6 move. But the rest of those moves it was showing, I'm not so certain about that. Some of them looked a little nonsensical. So I was just positioning my pieces. I think getting the rook on e1 as opposed to d1 is helpful because I have it lined up with black's queen. That could be nice tactically. Maybe black should play f5 right here and try to block my bishop. It does weaken g6, but if he's going to play f5, he's probably not going to get a better chance than what he's experiencing right now. So instead he goes queen e7. Now I played queen h5. So I just didn't see a good way if I play like queen d3, he's going to play g6, and I didn't see a good way to get through this. I don't think Check. this knight sacrifice is ever working. He just defends. Moreover, he wants me to do some semi-unsound sacrifice like that, so he has a chance to get back in the game. Versus if I just slowly build up, he might be helpless. This looks like a good plan, though. Queen h5, and then bring the rook up. And then definitely not trade queens. We don't want to relieve any of the pressure on black's position. I went after the queen. I think these moves are all fine. Here I repeated the position once. The engine gives zeros, by the way, because it assumes, because white repeated, that the position's equal. <laughs> That's just a, an evaluation the, the engine will sometimes show when you do a repetition, but you shouldn't really read into that. Yeah, king h1 might be unnecessary. I thought about going for g4 right away, but I figured, why rush? And that does seem to be the case. I mean, black is still helpless. g4. Yep, and g5, and it's plus 8. Main point being that he can't take because... After queen h5, I'm going to checkmate him. Queen h8 is coming. Unstoppable. Or queen h7. 
So I don't think the uh, the fact that black went down on any particular move is relevant because I think it's just a gradual uh, downslide for black anyways. Like the damage has already been done is what I'm saying. This position is too much. It's too overwhelmingly in white's favor. Maybe he could have defended better somehow at the end, but it scarcely matters because you can't hope to defend this position against a good player as black. That said, the buildup was interesting, and also the discussion surrounding this c5 idea I think is relevant to many types of positions because I've seen this happen out of openings like the Karo Khan and various lines of the Slav here in a QGD-esque position. So this is a positional theme that you should be aware of for both white and black. Even if you don't play d4, I think this is a good one to know. The pawn on c5, which blunts the bishop on b7 because black cannot play the freeing move pawn to c5. So, instructive game. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.